Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So in the last two videos, we have been talking about uh, multi-threading in Java and in particular about uh, executor service and different variants in it like a single threaded executor, a cached executor, a fixed thread pool uh, and also a scheduled thread pool uh, variants. So in this video, we are going to talk about a Java fork join pool. So what is a fork join pool? So it is nothing but an executor service for running fork join tasks. And a fork join task is, is like a thread, but it is much lighter weight than a normal thread. And what's the speciality of this fork join pool? Like why can't we just use a regular executor service instead? The speciality is, is it's that it, it uses a work stealing algorithm. So what it means is that uh, if you have, let's say, two threads in a pool and if one thread has n number of tasks and the other one has some x number of tasks. Now, if one of the thread finishes all the tasks in its queue and if there is no new task submitted to the thread, then it will go and steal the tasks from the other thread, that is thread 2. So that is, in simple terms, that is how a work stealing algorithm works. And now, we, do we have to create this pool every time if we have to use it? Uh, probably not. I mean, it depends on your usage. You can create a custom pool if you want to. If not, you already have a static common pool readily available to you um, and you can use it. So one good example would be a parallel streams, which we will discuss in detail in this video, but parallel stream uses this common pool. And you have to be really careful when using this common pool. I'll, I'll explain you more about it. Uh, before we jump into the code, let's see how this, what do you mean by this fort join basically? Uh, so, for example, if you want to calculate the sum of first thousand uh, numbers, okay, and then you submit this to uh, a fork join pool. So, the, the, the way that it works is it would create two subtasks saying the first subtask will calculate the sum from 1 to 500 and the second one will calculate the rest of the numbers from 500 to 1000. Now the first one will again subdivide it into two more tasks as you can see so on and so forth like 1 to 250, 250 to 100. So the, and the second task also creates two subtasks again like 500 to 750 and 750 to 1000. So it will divide these into various subtasks and after calculating the sum it will start joining all the results and finally it will give you back the sum of the first thousand numbers. This is a very simple example of uh, how various tasks are forked and finally joined together. So that's how it got its name uh, like the fork join. Now let's take a look at uh, an example and see how this works for parallel streams. Okay. Now don't worry about all this commented code. Uh, uh, I I just left it in there because it's, it's it's easy for me to explain it later. So if you see this example, right, we are creating a stream here, Java 8 streams this is, and you're creating an int stream with a range of 1 to 50, okay? And now you call parallel here, and then this would internally use the common pool. Let's see what I mean by that. Now, when you run this, and uh, just to explain this one, so as you are looping through these numbers here, for each and every number, you are sleeping for about two seconds, and then you are printing the number along with the name of the thread that is currently uh, executing it. Okay. Now let's run this. Okay, it's it's just about to start. Right. So as you can see here, right, this is the common pool worker 3, worker 5, 
worker 7 and this is our main thread and these are the numbers that it is picking so i'm going to stop this and i'll explain you this output so if you see closely look at these numbers right look at worker 3 here it picked a range from 43 and the next one it picks is 44 and the next one is 45 right so it picked the range starting from 43 whereas if you look at worker 5 it took it from 16 next is 17 and next is 18 now see worker 7 it started from 40 41 42 but 43 is already picked right now let's see what worker 7 picked next it went back to 37 so talking about work stealing right so this is how it it, it probably works under the hood so it divides each thread is given a subset of numbers and once that subset is exhausted it will try to steal the work from other threads now the next question that would come to your mind probably is okay now you're talking about this common pool what is the size of this pool right so and how is that size of the pool decided now if you look at the output of this you can probably or you might have already guessed that the size is three right now where did this number three come from so to explain that uh, i'm going to run this one so this first command here it will tell how many cores i have on this machine and the second in here would tell what is the level of parallelism indirectly it would tell what is my common pool size right now let's run this once again okay so as you can see here the first statement here it 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 printed this number four and the second one here uh, it printed three so the way it works is that if you have n number of cores on your uh, on your system then the the common pool size would be n minus one so in my case i have four cores so the common pool parallelism level is 4 minus 1 which is 3 so that is the reason i have uh, as you can see i have three threads uh, or three workers in my common pool uh, one with three five and seven these are my three workers in the pool now if you remember the last point in my slides i said you have to be really careful when using the common pool right I'll, I'll tell you why now so when i say common pool so now how can we confirm that yes uh, this is in fact a common pool across your application uh, let's comment this out for a while and let's uncomment this piece of code here so what we are trying to do here is we are creating two threads here and within the first thread we are going through the integer stream uh, we're creating a parallel stream out of it and then we are sleeping each and every thread for about 60 seconds right and in the second thread we are again creating another integer stream from 100 to 110 and then we are trying to use the parallel streams again so as i said parallel streams use common pool so that means these two usages should use the same common pool that we have uh, that we just discussed and once we have these two threads we are starting the thread one we are sleeping for about two seconds this is because we want to make sure that thread one uh, this pool here or this parallel stream here it grabs all the threads and after that we'll kick off thread two now we'll see what happens to these tasks here okay now if you run this uh, example here
Okay. See this one? This is from... This is from uh, uh, the first first thread here, thread one. As you can see, it blocked all the three threads here, three, five, and seven. They're all sleeping right now, right? Now the second one has kicked off after two seconds. And if you see the second one ranges 100 to 110, correct? And as you can see, it was not able to use, though we use parallel streams here, it almost uh, went in sequence. Like it was, it did not have any of the common pool workers available to it. This is because there's some other parallel stream which is using all the threads here. So this is, if, if you take this a real uh, time example or a real world example, right? It, it, within your application, if you have two different uh, components and if one of the components is using parallel streams and if for some reason it is blocking all the threads, maybe on some IO or some uh, talking to a different service and if in a different uh, part of the application, if you try to use the same, if you try to use parallel streams again, then you might be competing for the resources. And in some cases, you might never get uh, the parallel processing that you expect. Rather, your tasks might just execute in, 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 in sequence. So this is why you have to be really careful when using uh, uh, the, the, the fork join pool, especially with parallel streams. Now, uh, now is there is there a solution to this one? Like, can you use parallel streams and you're, are you always stuck with a common pool? No, I mean, there, there are some alternatives. So what we can do is we can actually create our own fork join pool. We can define our parallelism level, like whatever you want it to be. It doesn't have to be, uh, you don't have to restrict it by the number of uh, cores as such. You can change it if you want to, like you can define whatever you want to. And then you can just say submit and then the rest of the processing is this is is the same so let's let's run this and see what happens So if you see here, I am, uh, let me define my parallelism level as two, okay? And now if I run this example, okay, do you see here? There are only two threads here running, one worker three and the other is worker one. So though we have three cores defined and, and, and see the naming as well, it, it, it does not say anymore that it is a common pool. Rather, it says folk join one, worker one, folk join pool one, worker three. So this is not using the common pool. Rather, we created our own folk join pool with, uh, with a defined parallelism level and then we are running our tasks. So this is another alternative that uh, you can use if you still want to use parallel streams, but maybe use your own folk join pool, right? Now, going back to the earlier example here, uh, this, this one last thing that I want to talk about before I wrap up this video. Now, in this example itself, let's say if you want to define your own parallelism level, with a common pool itself. Can we do that? Yes, we can do it. And the way to do that would be, you just have to set this property, system property here, which is fork join pool dot common dot parallels. Now, as you've seen here, my and the number of cores here is four and our parallelism level is four minus n minus one. It is four minus one, three, right? Now let's set it to two. And, and run this and see what happens. Okay, see this one? 
So the second statement now printed that the parallelism level is in fact 2 because you set it to 2 with the system property. Now as you can see the common pool has only two workers now worker 1 and worker 3. So this is how you can uh, change the parallelism level of a common pool if you have to. Now let's let's try something. Let's give this a parallelism level of uh, zero and see what happens. So as you can see, when you set the parallelism level as zero, it's not going to use the common pool anymore. It's not going to use the four join pool. Rather, the main thread, whatever, wherever you're running this one, that main thread is going to loop through uh, the rest of the code. You, it's, it's not going to use uh, the common pool in this case. Just something to remember when you're working with uh, four join pools. Uh, so that's all I have in this uh, video. In the next video, we are going to uh, talk m more about fork join pools and how you can create fork join task, uh, etc. So I hope you like this video. Um, so if you if if you like my video, please do share and subscribe. And also, uh, if you have any feedback for me, I would really uh, appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much. Goodbye.